a closer look at our main event. As one of the premier up-and-coming junior lightweights, Nate Campbell still feels he doesn't get the respect he deserves. But the fact that many see him as a one-dimensional big puncher many times works to his advantage. They think that I'm just a plotter, just a, a banger, just a, you know, a big bruiser, and I'm not. I mean, I'm an accomplished boxer. I think I proved that with the Casamayor fight. I proved that I could box all night if I had to. And if push comes to shove, we can fight. Since childhood, Nate's dream has been to be world champion. It was also his father's dream. My father died when I was 10, and he always told me I could be something special. He told me that whatever I wanted to be, anything at all, pick it, dedicate myself to it, work towards it, and I could have it. And I'm going to bring my best stuff every fight I come to because of that. Edelmiro Tiger Martinez is perhaps one of the slickest boxers in the junior lightweight division. He has modeled his style after his two idols, Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard, the kings of speed. My speed is tremendously fast combination. It's a combination fight. It's a different fighter than before. You're going to see a very different Tiger Martinez on this fight. Tiger lost his motivation to continue boxing after his pro debut. I last stopped fighting for two years. My, my dad pa passed away. My trainer passed away another two years. When I broke my collarbone, another three years. So I had a lot of setbacks in my career. When he was ready to return 27 months later, it was his son that provided the inspiration. And that's why basically I'm going to come out there and show the world that Tiger's not in play with. Well, Tiger Martinez is ready for a fierce test today against Nate Campbell. Campbell's got that big right hand. Do you think he's going to try to get the early stoppage? Oh, I'm sure he's looking to look impressive. He's angry at himself for his last fight, who he lost. So uh, he's going he's gonna to come in to win and, and look for the knockout early. And Jesse, uh, when you take a look at Tiger Martinez, this is a young man who is very confident coming into this fight. Absolutely, and he feels very comfortable about fighting here in Atlantic City. He's got a lot of fans. He brings them in by the busload from New York. So I think that confidence level is going to go up just because he feels like he's at home. All right, Raul referred to the fact that Campbell is coming off a loss. He stepped up in class and took on Yoel Casamayor, and he lost a very tough 10-round decision in California back in January. And early in the fight, Campbell had his moments. Raul, you were ringside. Your impressions of the way this thing unfolded? Well, he started off real aggressive real fast and then he faded in the later rounds experience took over Casamayor who's the Olympic gold medalist his experience took over he was landing the crispier accurate combinations from different angles and he lost the fight I had it 96 94 for Casamayor could have been a draw maybe they could do it again Nate Campbell says that that loss will remain with him forever and he says every opponent that's put in front of him from here on in will always feel the pain that he feels from that loss well, Tiger Martinez is first up. He is getting set to head into the ring as we are getting set for our main event. There is the 34-year-old born in the Bronx of New York City, living in Queens, New York. Tiger Martinez, 20 and two with nine knockouts. He's had a lot of injuries and some management problems, but he feels that he is primed and ready for this showdown. He last fought on October the 25th and came up with a majority decision win against Rocky Cassiani. Martinez said that Casamayor took Campbell lightly and Martinez feels that Campbell is taking Martinez lightly. Tiger Martinez dedicating this fight to his father who passed away a decade ago and his original trainer, Gene Smith, who also passed away about 10 years ago. He said, this is the culmination of all that work we did early in my career, and today I will shine and make them proud. He will face a very tough task in the Galaxy Warrior. 31-year-old Nate Campbell from Jacksonville, Florida. 23 and one with 21 knockouts. Campbell looks very focused, Raul. Yeah, he's very excited and uh, he wants to shine today on NBC. He wants to prove to the people that he's still a legitimate junior lightweight contender. He wants to reach his ultimate, fight for the world title. He wants to win a world title. Well, right now he holds the NABF Super Featherweight Championship, a very respected regional title, one of the stepping stone belts on the way to a world championship. He has wins against Daniel Alisea, Carlos Navarro. 
confident, very proud of where he's come from after a rough upbringing. Let's take a look at the Budweiser tail of the tape for our main event, Nate Campbell and Tiger Martinez. And you see the weights are about the same. And you could make the case that Campbell might have the better level of competition. Yes, Campbell, uh, his last fight with Celta from Mayor, Hank World Champion, more experience there compared the to Tiger Martinez. Here's our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Trump Taj Mahal here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Main Events presents the Budweiser Boxing Series featured bout of the afternoon. Ten rounds of boxing in the junior lightweight division. The three judges at ringside. Scoring this bout will be Melvina Lathan, Barbara Perez, and John Potteray. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Earl Brown. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the NBC Boxing Series, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trimmed with gold and weighing in officially at 131 pounds. His professional record, 20 victories, including nine knockouts with only two defeats, from Lafrock City, New York. Here is Tiger Martinez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, also weighing 131 pounds, wearing purple trimmed with light blue, his professional record, 23 victories, including 21 knockouts with only one defeat. From Jacksonville, Florida, introducing Nate the Galaxy Warrior Campbell. 31-year-old Nate Campbell, a remarkable story. From the age of eight, shuttled in and out of foster care homes, 15 different public schools. Nate said, I know what it's like when nobody wants you. I'm here due to the grace of God. He had to quit high school in his sophomore year because of a lack of money. He took a 40-hour-a-week job in an Italian restaurant. He bounced around. He sold vacuums door-to-door, -door, stock shelves at the Winn-Dixie. When I ask you to break, I want you to stop door -to -door. punching step back. And then enrolled himself Protect yourselves at, all time. at Florida Community Do College, it. where he earned his high school diploma and two years of college. He said, I did it by myself, and nobody could ever take it from me. Life gives you many chances to make it right. Here are the New Jersey rules. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Accidental headbutt. They'll go to the scorecards after the halfway mark. I'll tell you what, Bob, for all the kids that are watching uh, NBC Boxing here today, Nate Campbell is the perfect example of the American dream. I mean, the guy was homeless. He lived out of a car, grew up without parents. He stayed away from all the bad influences in life the drugs, the gangs, and now he's being successful and wants to be even more successful in boxing, wants to become a world champion. He says life should not be a crutch. Life should be a stepping stone. Life gives you many chances to make things right. Campbell loves to loop with that right hand. Martinez has only been stopped once. That was by Gilberto Serrano back in 1999. Martinez was winning on all the cards in that fight and then got careless. Yeah, Nate's going to be very aggressive in this fight. As soon as uh, Tiger Martinez feels the power, Martinez is going to start running all over the place. So he's got to cut great, the ring off. Right. He can't just keep following him around. If he follows him around, he's going to make the fight boring for himself. I asked Martinez about Campbell's power, and he said, when he feels mine, I predict that I'll have him out by the seventh round. Very brave and brazen statement from Tiger Martinez. And he's got a lot of confidence. He's in excellent shape. But he's got to be uh, in tremendous condition to keep Nate off of him, being that Nate is uh, the stronger man physically. And really, Tiger doesn't have the power to keep him off to get a Nate's respect. So he's got to be moving at all times, side to side, bobbing him. We even don't stay in front of him. He cannot afford to stay in front of him. He, if he gets in a total toe, toe match with him, he's going he's gonna to get knocked out. Martinez trying to get his jab working. The name for Campbell, Galaxy Warrior, came from the first gym that he worked out in, Galaxy Gym. 
Martinez is willing to mix it up with the hard hitting Campbell here in the first. Uh, it's okay if he mixes it up, but he's got to move away as soon as he catches him with three and four combinations. Move to the side, move to the other side. He's finding the right, the right fight right now so far. Great, 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 great. According to the CompuBox numbers, through the first two minutes of the first round, Campbell landing only one of 18 jabs. And that's because Tiger's moving all over the place. It's harder to hit a moving target. Bit of a feeling out process here in round one. Yeah, Nate needs to throw more jabs, double up the jab, triple up the jab, kind of blind him with the jab and then hit him with the, the big right hand. He won't be able to see the right hand after he blinds him with two or three triple jabs. Martinez working his jab, Campbell working his. Final seconds of round number one, Tiger Martinez and Nate Campbell in a feeling out process. You're watching Budweiser Boxing on NBC. Have you ever spent like five minutes with him? He's totally self-centered and insensitive. They just don't go together. I mean, she's my best friend. She has these emotional needs he can't meet. Remember what she went through with Brad? It was just like awful. He's so rude. And it's a deep drive to center. Rodriguez makes the catch. It looks like they're gonna send the runner. Here comes the throw. He's safe, he's safe. The winning run is now on third. You're such a great listener. Thanks. In one week, Tuesday's getting bigger, better, and wetter. Last summer's hit show, Dog Eat Dog, is back. It's three games in one, with more brawn, more brains, more strategy, and even more bro. See ya! An all-new Dog Eat Dog, two-hour premiere, NBC Tuesday in one week. Superstars from entertainment and sports herald the world's best athletes. The Laureus World Sports Awards, next Sunday at noon Eastern on NBC. And here we see Tiger speed there, clocking Campbell with a good right. Didn't do much damage, but it caught his attention. That was action in round number one. Round number two underway. Nate Campbell and Tiger Martinez. Martinez from Queens in New York City. Campbell from Jacksonville, Florida. Tiger Martinez said he was going to let the Tiger out of the cage, but in a very smart disciplined way and so far uh, he's fine really smart Bob I mean his thing is to hit and not get hit and so far he's he's doing that Martinez for the last 10 years has worked at the Lafrac City Housing Authority as a maintenance man in Queens New York City and his boss gave him a three-month leave to get ready for this fight right hand over the top by Martinez got Campbell on the ear his attention there again. Campbell says no, it doesn't hurt, but believe me, it hurt him. You know, all week Campbell's been talking about I'm gonna knock this guy out, I'm gonna I'm not gonna leave it up to the judges. And he's doing the same thing again. He's looking for that one big punch. He needs to put his punches together. That's what cost him the fight with Casamayor. Right now, Tiger Martinez fighting a very smart second round. Excellent round for Tiger Martinez. Holds him in the inside. Fights when he wants to fight. Right hand to the body from Campbell. Most of it missed. Great, 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 great. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Referee Lindsey Page saying, fight your way out of it. Then Martinez gets that right hand in. Campbell only one for 12 with the jab here in the second round. Great, great, great. Go punch, go punch. Back up. Yeah, he's, Campbell's plotting too much again. He's weighing too much. He's looking at him. He's not cutting the ring off the right way. If, if Tiger Martinez moves to the right, he's got to slide with him to his right and come back with an overhand right. And he moves to his left and slide to his left and come back with a hook to the body, left hook to the body to slow him down. Martinez punching. The, official, the referee said, punch your way out. Martinez obliged. Good second round for Tiger Martinez against the tough Nate Campbell. Great, great. Don't punch, don't punch. Another right hand by Martinez. Great, great, great. Don't punch, don't punch. 
Nate's got to pound the body. He's got to wor work the body in the early rounds. And he's doing it. He's trying, but he's got to come back with more. Great, great, great. No punch. But a good second round for Tiger Martinez. Well, we're through two rounds here at the Trump Taj Mahal, and now here's a word from Universal Pictures. in theaters on June the 6th. Well, today's boxing on NBC from the top Taj Mahal in Atlantic City is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. I'm warning you about the hole and I'm warning you about the head, all right? I understand, I understand. All right. Nate Campbell with a rough two rounds against Tiger Martinez. And don't follow him. All right, step to your right and cut him off. You see that Tiger Martinez back up, back up, back up. with the edge so far, and he's yes. really controlling the distance. You see the good right hand at the start of round two from yeah. Martinez. His speed are very important here, connecting with the crisp, accurate combinations. And I'll tell you, if he wants to win this fight, Tiger, he's, his punch output has to be two to one over Nate's punch output, and so far he's doing that, Bob. All right, if you're in the Campbell camp, Roel Marquez, what's the game plan now? Well, he's got an excellent trainer in him, Buddy McGirt, who's done wonders for other fighters like Arturo Gatti. Now he's working with Nate Campbell. He's got to put his punches together. He's, he's got to get back to the basics. Come off his jab, use his jab more, cut the ring off the right way, pound the body. That way he's able to stop Tiger in his tracks. You know, he's moving around too much. He's got to get him tired. Well, through the first two rounds, Campbell had only landed three jabs total. At a 44 throne. I got to wake him up in his corner. He's thinking knockout, knockout, and he's looking for that big punch. He depends too much on his right hand. All right, well, speaking of the Campbell corner, let's send it to Jesse Lozada with Buddy McGirt. Buddy, buddy, what's he going to have to do to turn this thing around? He's having problems setting up that job. If I can. What he's doing is he's trying to knock the guy out. What he has to do is just step over, and make the guy cross his body with the right hand. What he's doing is he's walking straight in with no regard of the guy's punching power, and he's getting hit by the right hand. So what he has to do is step over, cut the guy off, and I'm telling him to stick the guy's the jab to the guy's chest and knock him off balance because he's trying to hit the guy in the head, and the guy's letting him jab, and he's countering over the jab with the right hand. Thank you, buddy. Let's go back to you, Bob. All right, Jesse, and of course, Buddy McGirt. Starred on NBC Boxing in the late 80s. And Buddy McGirt liked to throw that overhand looping right hand, something that Campbell does. And yes. a nice counter left by Martinez. Yeah, Buddy's got the right game plan, but he's just got to get his fighter to do it. Got to triple up that jab, come back, change the jab, you know to the body, to the head, giving different looks. Sometimes he just has the tendency to fight with one hand. He's looking for that one big punch. He can't depend, I'm telling you. In boxing, you can't knock everybody out. There's gonna break, be a time break, break. where no punch, no punch. somebody's gonna take your punches and not fall. Come here. Come here. Come here. You heard the referee say, don't here, punch, here, don't here. punch. No, no, come here, come here, come here. I'm not going for this no more, all right? No, 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 no. I don't want to hit. I don't want to go for no more. Punch in the break, I'm taking away your point. All right, right? Time in. I think Nate is a little bit frustrated from all the movement Tiger Martinez has given him. No, no. That's a slip. That's a slip they get tied up. You know, one thing, though, to take a look at, so far here in round number three, Campbell has thrown 49 punches. Martinez has only thrown 16. He's got to pick up the pace, doesn't he? Yeah, this is a better round uh, for uh, Nate Campbell. He's, he's throwing more punches. He's got to wear him down. He's got to break this guy down. He's got natural power in both hands. If he just let his combinations go, if he punishes him for three or four rounds with solid combinations, he's going to get tired. He's going to go. You're watching Budweiser Boxing on NBC. On the finale of Legendary Nights, the tale of Lewis Tyson. When I go to big cities, everybody stop. You're Mike Tyson, aren't you? The most dangerous puncher in the ring. Knock people out. And a regal heavyweight champion looking to cement his legacy with one request. You know, I want Tyson. An inevitable showdown. Now, hear the stories behind the fights. 
As the epic series Legendary Knights concludes with the tale of Lewis Tyson, Wednesday on HBO. I'm Dan Aykroyd. I'm hosting the season finale of Saturday Night Live this week with Beyonce. Get off! I can't, Donatella. I'm hosting the show. I ain't told you. Sunday, it's crunch time. The AFL on NBC regular season finale. It's must win for Indiana as they look to keep their playoff hopes alive. While it's win and they're in for Chicago. Or Tampa Bay goes for the division title in their path playoff bound Georgia. The AFL on NBC. Sunday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Welcome back to Budweiser Boxing on NBC. Bob Papa, Raul Marquez, Jesse Lasada, round four. Nate Campbell and Tiger Martinez. Campbell 23 and 1 with 21 knockouts. And round number three, a much better round for Campbell. Although you could say that Martinez's inactivity helped Campbell sort of get his sea legs a little bit, Raul. Yeah, I think so. I think his inactivity uh, has made him a little bit more more he's, he's not moving as much in, in this round and because of uh, you know cables Campbell's got a uh, devastating power he's got good power in both hands and it looks like he's breaking them down that was a very good round for him the last round he put his punches together put combinations together he, he needs to take advantage of that when he has them on the ropes there pound the body well he heard from the Nate Campbell camp and what Nate has to do, Martinez had a good first two rounds, although he slowed down in round number three. Jesse Lasada has headed to the Martinez camp with Harry Cape. Thank you, and we're here with Harry. Harry, uh, he started out really well. He seems to slow down the last couple of rounds. Nah, he just, I think he's just picking his shots and stuff like that. He's moving around good, but I like to see him, see his hands moving some more and stay busy. You no, know, because this is, a, this, is a, this is a winnable fight for him. And then I don't think much of Nate Campbell. I think Nate Campbell took Tiger very lightly. So um, this is a fight we can win. Definitely, this is a wonderful fight. Harry Kay, thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to Bob. Okay. All right, Jesse. I have to agree with his trainer. I think uh, Nate did take uh, Tiger a little bit light. He, I think he was surprised that he came uh, so fast in the first two rounds and, and won the rounds. But I think Tiger's conditioning is getting weak now. It looks like he's, uh, it was too excited and, and, and let too many punches go in the earlier rounds. That's why he's getting tired now. Yeah, two rounds don't make a fight. Exactly. Sure, Martinez fought two good rounds, but we're in round number four in a scheduled ten rounder. Martinez has to pick up the work rate, although he did land a lead right hand. Yeah, he did. He just overhand. I think it was an overhand right over the top. He landed it again. Martinez being careful, waiting for the counter shot from Campbell, but it never came. Well, you always hear trainers yelling from the corner, be first. And it seems that if Martinez is first, he has options break, to break, hit don't Campbell. Punch, don't punch, back up. Yeah, he does. Every time he's first, he connects them with the better shots. And it's okay to be first, but just don't stand in front of him. Because remember, he's got that big right hand. He just swung wild with it, missed the punch, made Campbell. Sometimes he looks like he's not really one of, he wants to be in this fight. He looks a little bit bored. Like, I don't know if he's, he's up for it like how he said he was. Now Martinez picking it up in round number four. We're through four rounds here at the Trump Taj Mahal. Now here's a word from Universal Pictures. We settle this on the blacktop. The losers will hand over them keys. One, two, three. June 6th. It's not what you drive. It's how you live. We're going to do this big. Too fast, too furious. How you like that? Well, let's see if Martinez and Campbell get fast and furious. Log on to NBCSports.com for much more on boxing, including the latest news and features on the top title contenders, plus a schedule of upcoming fights. It's all at NBCSports.com. Well, Tiger Martinez getting some work done on that left eye, but a very good round three. Another good round for Tiger. You ain't tip top shit. But I don't know. Uh, All right. Supposedly, in the best step of his life, he took three months leave of absence for this fight. And I see him a little bit winded in that corner, Bob. He did land some meaningful punches in that fourth round. There's a jab from Martinez. I tell you, it's, it's hard to fight a, a fight like Martinez for 10 rounds, up on your toes, moving around, throwing combinations. Kind of reminds me when Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad fought. 
Oscar De La Hoya was winning the fight. He got tired in the, admitted to me that he got tired in the later rounds. You got to be in excellent condition to fight that type of fight. Come on, Martin, it's not the whole thing. It's easier. Two, yeah, two extra rounds to fight. Right, right, he did. But it's easier to be aggressive, I think, and to be the boxer moving around, sticking and moving. You got to be in excellent condition for that. Saw Raul's scorecard. Three rounds to one. Not a man has been down. Yeah, sooner or later, Tiger's going to have to sit down and punch break, break, break. with Campbell. I don't think he's going to be able to follow this pace here. I'm not going to warn you no more. Keep saying he, he keeps, to me, he looks a little winded there. Campbell digging a right hand to the body. Campbell's taking advantage of that. The body shots are, after a couple of rounds, believe me, they're going to take effect. They've been taking effect so far. Now the guy moved their hands in that sequence. So they'll reset. I hear Buddy McGirt yelling, throw the jab. He's, he's waiting too much. He's, he's waiting. He's not, just got caught again. Counter shot from Martinez. Now Martinez putting his punches together. Campbell blocked most of it. He blocked some, but he landed. Martinez landed a big right. Martinez needs to cast that right hand with his left hand and then come back with a right uppercut, counter with a right uppercut. He needs that, to measure him again. Is that the punch you like off that wild right yes, hand? Yes, yes. Catch, catch him with his left, counter off of that, come back with a left uppercut. I mean a right uppercut. One point deduction for Holden. All right. Come on. Let's go. Ah, they're just taking a point away from Martinez for Holden. No warning. No warning here. I mean, we, we've had a couple of, you know, subtle warnings. That's a tough blow for Martinez. Did you say that it's excessive holding for Martinez? I don't think so. He's just trying to smother him. Uh, cut, on the, him. cut on the left eyebrow of Martinez. There's a cut on the left eyebrow of Martinez. Was it from a punch or an accidental clash of heads? Time, 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 time. Now we'll get a timeout. And Lindsey Page is going to have the doctor take a look at it. Martinez is saying he was headbutt. That is on, I don't think that's on the eyebrow. No, it doesn't oh, look like, like it's on the eyelid, and that could be in a very bad yes. spot. All right. Now, is it in the eyelid or is it on the eyelid? It is. Eyelid. That's a bad oh, spot. Dude, that is very frustrating. I, I experienced that before. A cut on the eyelid when I fought Fernando Vargas. Actually, it happened on the first round. He messed up my whole game plan. So, Martinez loses a questionable point for holding, and he has a cut on his left eyelid. And they're going to have to go to work on that cut. Jesse Lozada is standing by with the doctor who looked at Martinez's cut. Oh, thank you, Bob. Oh, with Dr. Wernzer, uh, yeah. give us a description I, of the I cut. I pointed to him. I he thought I pointed to him. a two-centimeter laceration on the lateral border of his uh, left upper eyebrow. No problem to continue, or uh, you think it could get worse? Stop the fight at this you time. If it gets worse, Martinez, right? we would consider stopping the fight, but he's a safe fighter at this time. Thank you, doctor. Back to you, Bob. Sure you All right, thank you very much, Jesse. Okay. Now, I was just informed by the commission an accidental clash of heads caused that cut. So if this fight gets stopped, now that we're past the midway point, they go to the judges' scorecards. Now, who'd you score that round for, Raul? I scored it for Nate. So it was it's a, a close round. It was so a close round, but, I, but it's a 10-8 round because Martinez lost a point for holding. I scored it a 10-9 round because I still think Martinez did enough to, to be in that round. A very close round. So you would have had it even if not for the point deducted. Exactly. And I made it a 10-8 for Campbell. And that's a huge swing in this fight. Well, it looks like they did a good job in the corner of stopping the blood, which is good because it, being cut in that area is very frustrating. You see foggy, it looks like you're foggy red. It doesn't allow you, allow you to do what you want to do in the fight. Good right hand to the chin by Martinez. Campbell comes back at him. Cat and mouse 
game going on. Martinez trying to counter off some of Campbell's wild misses. There's a good right hand from Martinez. Come on. And a good body good shot. Come, came right back with the, the right hook to the body. Campbell missing with his right hand to the head. Yeah, Campbell so far is, is missing too many punches in this round. Try to set him up with the jab. He's, gotta, he's not throwing the jab enough, Bob. He just pause with it. Throw a snappy jab. He's a strong guy. He's powerful. He's stronger than Martinez. In that fifth round could be a huge swing in this fight. Martinez losing a point, questionable hold. Right hand glancing by Martinez. And they counter with that right uppercut. Caught him coming in. But Campbell definitely leaves some opportunities for counter shots, doesn't he, Roy? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, I've seen a lot of opportunities. And Tiger Martinez is not capitalizing on that. He's swinging wild sometimes, Campbell, with that right hand. Should counter punch off of that and come back with three and four punch combinations. One thing, Campbell, if Campbell would use his jab consistently, he could work on that cut a little bit. Yes, he'll make the fight easier for himself, too. Open up the cut, make, maybe cut him again from a punch. There's a good yeah. stiff jab from Campbell. Yeah. Now we get a little bleeding yeah. out of that left eye. Intriguing matchup between Nate Campbell and Tiger Martinez. You're watching Budweiser Boxing on NBC. Well, I had a really nice time tonight. Me too. <laughs> well, I guess it's getting late. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's getting late. Yeah, it's getting so dark. <laughs> from Midas, America's trusted leader in brakes. Right now, get lifetime BSD brake pads or shoes for just $39.95 at Midas, and you'll never have to buy brake pads or shoes again for as long as you own your car. So how do you find the time to repair your brakes without stopping your life? The answer is Midas for fast, reliable brake service. Hurry into Midas today for lifetime BSD brake pads or shoes. Next stop, Midas. Lifetime brake pads or shoes, $39.95. Installation extra at Midas. Welcome back to Budweiser Boxing on NBC. The scorecard of Raul Marquez, 57 all through six. I have Martinez up 57-56 in round number five. That's a question mark there, round number five. Have Very Martin close round. And Martinez lost a point for holding, so if you gave the round to Campbell, it would have been a 10-8 round, which is how I had it scored. You had the round even, thus it was 10-9 right. for Campbell. That's a big swing round right there. Good right hand there by Martinez, and then he missed with the left hand. Looks like uh, Nate Campbell's uh, punches are flowing better now. Maybe he's, it took him six, seven rounds to get warmed up. Cause he, he seemed kind of tight at the beginning. He was, he wasn't relaxed. You know, in boxing, the more relaxed you are, the better the punches flow. So like a golf, the harder you try to hit it, usually the shorter it goes. Right. Relaxed swing sends the ball further. Well, it would seem to me with Campbell being the favorite, obviously, coming into this fight, and Martinez looking for the biggest win of his career. Martinez needs to pick up the pace a little bit here. He's got to press the action a little bit more, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He, he needs to do a little bit more of what he was doing in the first couple of rounds. But just be real smart when, when he's when he's putting pressure on Nate Campbell. Don't get careless. Don't get caught with one of them overhand rights. Because Nate Nate's got power. He's, he'll be able to finish. Uh, if he catches you, he'll he'll end it with one punch. So as long as he he's more aggressive and throws faster combinations, 
maybe he could win this fight, but he's not doing enough to 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 look that impressive in front of the judges and for them to well, give him the de decision. Watch your head. Watch your head. All right. Dave Tenning has done a nice job in the Martinez camp on that cut on the left eyelid of Martinez. And he's also been helped out by the fact that Nate Campbell has not been consistent with a jab. No, he hasn't. Uh, no, he hasn't. He, 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 he throws it out there, but it, he doesn't throw it with uh, authority, with, with power, with respect. Martinez puts his hands together. He measures Campbell with a right hand. Great, great. great. Uh, don't hold him. Good combination there by Martinez. He used to do more of that. There's a good jab from Martinez. Steps in with the right. I'll tell you, Nate really underestimated Martinez in this fight. I could tell by the look in his face. I think uh, Martinez is really surprising him today. Mart Martinez having a good round, and now I think Campbell suffered a cut here. Break, break, break. In round number seven. Maybe the old cut from the Casamayor fight that opened up again. Through seven rounds here at the Trump Taj Mahal, and now here's a word from Universal Pictures. Four round seven. Go! One, two, three! Run these streets! Hit it, baby, hit it! Okay, listen, listen, hope you gotta watch that head. Hope you gotta watch that head. Too fast, too furious. PG-13 starts June 6th. Speaking of Fast and Furious, coming up next, right, NBC listen, listen, proudly presents the second leg of the Visa Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes. After an unforgettable finish at Churchill Downs, all eyes shift to Pimlico on the Preakness as Kentucky Derby winner Funny Side looks to take the next step toward becoming the first Triple Crown winner in a quarter century. The Visa Triple Crown continues with the Preakness Stakes, coming up next only right, on NBC. Uh, Martinez with a solid round number seven roll. Yes, down to the final three rounds. And uh, up to now, I, I got this fight very close. I got Martinez up by one point. I think this fight is up in the air. And, Cam gonna... and Campbell was cut on the left eyebrow from that accidental clash of heads. Good right hand by Martinez. Break, 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 break. Oh, both guys hitting on the break. Take a look at Raul's scorecard. 67-66 yep. for Tiger Martinez, who uh, scored very effectively in the last round, throwing his combinations with speed, accuracy. Break, break, stop punching, stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. I have a 67-65 with a two-point round. And now the referee, Lindsey Page, is going to have the doctor take a look at that cut again on the left eye of Martinez. Now remember, because it's from an accidental foul. How you feel? Good, good. All right. You're going to get a little blood, so. <laughs> unintentional. Unintentional. He's pulling him down. All right, I think it's okay. okay. All right, all right. There's it. another, another cut now. There's one above the eyebrow yeah, and one on the eyelid. Right. Now remember, under the rules, if this fight gets stopped because of these accidental cuts, they'll go to the scorecards. If they went to Raul Marquez's scorecard, Martinez would pull off the upset. Oh, good right hand by Campbell. Big right hand. But Martinez takes it in stride. Martinez got hurt there, though. Four, five, I'll tell you, he ran six, right into that. Seven, eight. How you, how you feel? Go, go, go. All right, and all right. Campbell's going to come back with go. a big right. He's, he ran, he's running after him. He has him hurt. Right, changed the angle the right hand nicely that time. Now Martinez trying to fight his way out. He's to hold on break, to him. Break, don't punch, don't punch. Back up, back up. Go. Plenty of time to go here in round eight. Campbell on, go trying to finish things off. Martinez trying to survive and comes back with the flurry. He got an uppercut in there. Yes. Come on, keep that low keep for Martinez. He needs to keep his hands up. Keep his hands up. Martinez has taken some big shots from Campbell, although he was knocked down here in the eighth. He's hanging tough, but the corner's not where he wants to be. I think he's weathering the storm. He, he took them right hands pretty well. I mean, even though he went down, he was hurt, but got up and he looks in better condition now. He can't get careless. Break, break, break. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. 
Come on. Well, the chant of Tiger. Martinez is from New York City. About an hour and a half ride, two hours from Atlantic City. And Martinez battling back after getting dropped here in the eighth. Come on, go home. What a warrior that Martinez is. And you could went make... Down, yeah, went could, down, come back up, and he's him. still trying to win. And you could make the case that instead of it being a 10-8 round, he might be making it a 10-9, but then he takes a oh, right hand. Vicious action here in the eighth. Martinez coming back at Campbell. Hey! We're through eight rounds here at the Trump Taj Mahal, and now here's a word from Universal Pictures. On June 6th. You ready for this? This is not. The streets belong to the fearless. Too fast, too furious. PG 13. Now the action in round number eight, Fast and Furious, cut on the left on, eye of Nate no Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at minutes. the right hand yes, that dropped Let's Martinez. Yeah, there goes a big overhand right that Nate's been looking for it all night, all day long, and he finally found his mark. So we see Martinez trying to hold on to Nate Campbell. Big round. Big round for Nate Campbell. He starts flurrying, you punch back. Back to the body. See the numbers in round number eight. All power shots. Each guy landed marginal number of jabs. They were letting the leather fly. So Campbell with another two-point round. And he's got to take advantage of that last round. He's got to turn it up here. He's got two rounds. Still a close fight, Bob. Oh, yeah. Very close. Remember, Martinez lost a point back in the fifth for holding. Raul has Campbell ahead by one. I have it even at 75-75. Martinez misses a counter opportunity. Watch out. I don't know. Nate might have let him go in that last round because he heard him put him down. Should have taken advantage of that even more. Great, great, go yeah, but you know what? Back Maybe back. Martinez just has a oh, he's up for the fight. chin. Yeah, yeah. He's motivated the conditioning. You know, he's in good condition. When you're in good condition, you can take a good punch and you're able to take it and get back up. What's that on, like when go. you get Let dropped? Break. Don't punch, don't punch. What's don't that punch. feel like, though? I wouldn't be able to tell you because I've never been dropped in my career. Never, 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 never been dropped. I take a good punch, Bob. Oh, I know you have. <laughs> That's why you are a champion. Let's check in on the Campbell camp with Buddy McGirt, the trainer for Nate Campbell. Buddy, Tesla what's he got to do? He seems like I let him off. You got to keep the pressure on him. Got to close the gap. You know, Martinez has experience, and he knows how to survive these rounds. So, you know, he tries to steal him. So I'm telling him I got to punch when the other guy punches. And when he did that last round, he knocked him down. So we got to stay right on that. Thank you, buddy. Back to you, Bob. All right, thanks, Jesse. Martinez hanging in there against Campbell. Here's Campbell stepping forward. Swinging a little bit wilder, missing with a one-two. And Martinez coming back with counter-punching. Fast combinations. Not putting any hurt to Nate Campbell, but hey, it's points. He's scoring. Karen, the action. Great. No punch, no punch. Both no punch, guys no have punch. been cut. Martinez twice from an accidental clash of heads. Campbell once. On, hold There's been great, one great, knockdown. No punch, no that came no punch, no punch. in the eighth. Martinez dropped by a right hand. And at least according to Raul Marquez and my scorecard, this fight's still hanging in the balance. Back up. Oh. Buddy McGirt yelling from the corner of Campbell. You've got to move your hands. Good counter right hand by Martinez. Campbell missed with his right. Martinez responding here in round number nine. A left he hand box, Campbell. You're watching Budweiser Boxing on NBC. <clears throat> when I look at Steve and Jenny, I just think, wow. 
Now there's a guy who shouldn't be getting married. <laughs> you should have seen him a week ago at his bachelor party. There was dancers all around him, and he was crying. I don't want to get married. I don't want to get married. And I'm like, shut up, man. She's loaded. Because that's what's important. You know? You know, that love. A breakthrough offer from Midas, America's trusted leader in brakes. Right now, get lifetime BSD brake pads or shoes for just $39.95 at Midas. And you'll never have to buy brake pads or shoes again for as long as you own your car. So how do you find the time to repair your brakes without stopping your life? The answer is Midas for fast, reliable brake service. Hurry into Midas today for lifetime BSD brake pads or shoes. Next stop, Midas. Lifetime brake pads or shoes, $39.95. Installation extra at Midas. Here's Martinez catching Campbell with a big right right there. Pushed him back. Again, no power there, but enough to score points. Tenth and final round underway. Martinez was dropped in the eighth. He lost a point in the fifth for holding, but he's battled back time and time again. I'll tell you, Bob, I think whoever wins this round is going to win the fight. It's a very close fight. I have Martinez by a point. I got it even here, 85-85. Now that's a slip. They get tied up and slip on some moisture in that corner. Very competitive fight, very close fight. And for all the, the fans that are trying to judge the fight out there, the, the criteria that the judges use, they look for effective aggressiveness. They look for the quality power punches landed, ring generalship, and good defensive skills. All right, time in. All right, so keep that in your head as you try to score this last round at home. The chant of Tiger, supporting Tiger Martinez out of New York City. A big fan favorite here. That should help him in this last round. He should be on him. He should be on Nate Campbell. Corner of Campbell, he's yelling, you're waiting too long, you're waiting too long. Actually, break, break, both fighters punch, are, punch, are waiting too long in this last round. Martinez is the one that digs in and puts his hands together. Nate is trying to close the gap, trying to measure him with the jab, but misses. Missed again. He's missing most of the punches in this round. And Martinez is countering with his speed again. Down a right hand to the body for Martinez after Campbell scored. 60 seconds remaining in the bout. Very break, close break, between break, Campbell break, and Martinez. Break. Is it incumbent upon Martinez to press the action here, Raul? He should be in there. He's an underdog. But I got him winning. He's winning this round. He's going to try to close big and press the judges at the end of the round. He's got 36 seconds left. Should land a lot of flurries, throw flurries, that's his best. He throws a lot of combinations with speed. He can try to end the fight like that and, and impress the judges. There's a right hand from Martinez. That's it. Campbell counters back to get Martinez off him. Now Martinez trying to pin Campbell on the road. Shining on Nate Campbell. Watch your head. Watch your Fast combination so by Martinez. Left hand from Campbell. Let him go, let him go. Break, go punch, go punch. Go. Final seconds of the bout. I tell you, I'm, I'm glad I'm not a judge of this fight. Okay. Good fight. Both men exhausted. You don't see the normal running around the ring. Tiger Martinez and Nate Campbell. Outstanding action in this 10-round bout. Martinez got off the deck and battled back. How do the judges have it scored? We'll be right back after these words from your local station. You're watching Budweiser Boxing on NBC. NBC Wednesday, celebrate Law & Order's 300th episode with a two-hour season finale. It doesn't get any more ripped from the headlines than this. A woman drives over her husband. Get out of the car! And a celebrity holds his baby out the window and drops him. There's a TV movie in this. I can smell it. The two-hour Law & Order finale, NBC Wednesday. Sunday in the Care 11 Extra. Good, that a boy. Nice job. What are you doing? On the court, on the air, a hard-driving worker, a life-changing experience. I don't want to waste a minute. 
because I almost lost everything. He's fought a life-threatening battle in a very public business, and now he's reached a major milestone. I remember thinking nothing good could come of it. So much good has come of it. A second chance, a changed man. Watch the Randy Shaver story, Sunday in the CARE 11 News Extra. When you can go from zero to 60 in seconds and get zero for 60, it's Pontiac performance season. Get 0% financing for 60 months on a 2003 Pontiac and never pay interest, ever. Or get $3,000 cash back on most 2003 Pontiac models. See your select Pontiac excitement dealer. Celebrating 50 years, you're watching CARE 11. What a battle between Nate Campbell and Tiger Martinez. Raul Marquez's scorecard, 95-94 for Martinez. I had it 95-93. Remember, Martinez lost a point in the fifth for holding and was down in the eighth round. Those could be critical rounds. Final CompuBox numbers. Martinez lands 25% of his overall punches, 72 of 253 in the power category. You see only a two-point difference in connections. How do the judges have it scored? Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Barbara Perez scores the contest 95-93 for Martinez. Melvina Lathan scores it 95-93 for Campbell. And John Pottery has it. 94, 94, it's a three-way split. The bout is a draw. Now the only reason why it's a draw is because Martinez lost a questionable point in round number five for yes. holding role, Marquez. Hey, close fight, close call. I had it for Martinez, but I'm happy with the draw. Kind of reminds me of the Casamayor fight when he fought uh, with Nate Campbell. Martinez fought the fight of his life. He gets a draw. Campbell survives. He's standing by with Jesse Lasada. Thanks, Bob. Nate, a very, very tough fight. You almost took him out there towards the end, and at the very end of the fight, it seems like you were you were just dead tired. No, I, you know what? I never make excuses about any fight I've ever fought. I believe the layoff of three or four months for me is too long. I, I can't not fight for months, months, months like that. This kid can fight, no, no doubt about it, but I should have beat him. Definitely. It was a great fight. We certainly enjoyed it. What's next for you now? This is a tough one. I don't know. You're going to have to go back and regroup, see maybe uh, Casa Mayor is a possibility? You know what? I think that all the turmoil that I went on with this last week, last few weeks in camp, it was never, it was a good camp. But I never had a mental focus on this fight because I was dealing with all kind of other stuff outside of the ring. Well, thank you and congratulations because it was a great fight. Let's go with Tiger. He's right here. Tiger, a uh, tremendous fight. All the way from the beginning to the end, you showed tremendous uh, strength even after getting cut twice. And I think everybody can see just how deep those cuts are. First of all, I'd like to thank God Almighty and my family, Dominican Republic, and the people that always pray for me, Barbara, Linda, Francisca, and going back to the fight. I think he headbutt me twice. That's why the cuts was, wasn't no, by, by no punch. I thought I was in the head because I outboxed him. I was certain he caught me with a good shot. The only good shot he caught me was the one with the knockdown. That's it. Well, I thought I shot him down. How, how much did that point they took off hurt? I think that, that made, certainly made the difference in this fight, huh? He caught me by holding him. He caught me with his head. I'm trying to tell him he coming in with his head, and I couldn't get away from him. That's why he hit by me a couple of times. I told the ref, ref ignored it. Absolutely. A questionable call at best, but congratulations because it was an incredible fight. I would like to thank NBC, uh, Telemundo, for having this fight done, and thanks God, everything came out all right. No winners, but I thought I was the winner. Thanks God, thanks to you all. And main event, main event, I love you. Thank you, Tiger. Well, the winner was definitely the fans. We got to see some really great boxing this afternoon. Back to you, Bob. All right, Jesse, and Tiger Martinez is a winner because he showed that he belongs. Coming up, the AIG Sports Desk with Dan Hicks, plus more boxing. You're watching Budweiser Boxing on NBC. Halibut with polenta cake sounds good. Oh, but polenta sometimes makes me break out. Mm, I will get, oh, a vegan club sandwich. Mm, vegans are like so 
in. Is the salmon east coast or west coast? That'll just do a number on me. I can come back Maybe later. Crab cakes. Oh, I had crab cakes. <clears throat> Sir? Sure. Porterhouse. Medium. Rare. Slaw. Cob. Ranch. Blue. Fries. Baked. Toppings. All of them. Oh, here's something. Coconut dipped shrimp saute with pilaf. I like pilaf. Defending champion Tiger Woods, the most powerful force in golf. With one more victory in a major championship, he'll move into third place on the all-time list and be halfway to Jack Nicklaus's record. Will he add to his legend? Golf's greatest championship, the U.S. Open, starting Thursday, June 12th on NBC. Monday, the first ever live broadcast from the DMZ. Matt Lauer reports on America's troops policing Korea's thin line between war and peace. Only on Today on NBC. This is the AIG NBC Sports Desk. Here's your host, Dan Hicks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Rockefeller Center studios. We'll get you back to Atlantic City in just a few minutes. And a reminder, though, coming up at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, Kentucky Derby winner Funny Side goes for the second leg in horse racing's Triple Crown as we bring you live coverage of the Preakness Stakes from Baltimore. And that's where we go for a preview with Tom Hammond. Tom? All right, Dan, we are at uh, historic Pimlico trying to stay warm on a cold and rainy afternoon for the 128th Preakness. The Woodlawn vase on the right uh, honors the winner. The uh, winning owner gets the replica on the left. Still a pretty nice prize for winning the Preakness Stakes. Joined here by Charles Candy. And Charles, uh, all controversies aside, Funny Side's victory in the Kentucky Derby was quite uh, the story. The first New York bred, the first gelding since 1929 to win the Roses. Indeed, and he's done well since the Derby. He's back here today, but to win the Preakness, he's going to have to overtake Peace Rules once again. The horse who finished third in the Kentucky mm -hmm. Derby, Bobby Frankel, is hoping Peace Rules can give him his first win and a classic. It's a good rematch between these two. Well, the weather and the track condition has been a big concern all day long, and Tom Durkin's right down in the middle of it. Tom, what's it like down on the track? And you thought I couldn't be a weatherman. <laughs> well, it's not even post time, and we've already broken a Preakness record. It's the coldest Preakness on record at 52 degrees. We had a lot of rain here in the Baltimore area yesterday, but we're going with a track condition listed as good. But most importantly, who's going to win the Preakness? For that, these are the guys with the answers. <laughs> oh, if we only knew Mike oh, Vitaglia. I was thinking about the Seabiscuit movie that's coming out later in the year. It's the story of an unlikely hero. We've got one this year in Funny Side, and can he keep it going? That's the big question today at Pimlico. We really do, and that is the question. Can he duplicate the form of two weeks ago in the Kentucky Derby? If he does, and he wins today in the Preakness, in three weeks, he could be shooting to become the most, one of the most, improbable triple crown winners in the history of our sport. As Chelsea pointed out, his biggest adversary today is Peace Rules. They both drawn on the outside, so a couple of things to watch. The break. The start, definitely. Neither, te neither horse can afford to miss the break from the outside. Side. And that action in the first turn, I think, will be critical to the running of today's race. Who gets the best position between these two horses? Peace Rules and Funny Side. Peace Rules does have the advantage there. He breaks from the seven hole, Funny Side from the nine. And Peace Rules, of course, trying to make Bobby Frankel give him his first Triple Crown victory of all time. If there's an upsetter, we can't find one yet, but this is racing. This is an off track. These are three-year-olds. Look for Lucas.